Now, as gunshots echo across the windswept, snow-covered reaches of the wild northwest, Quaker Puff wheat and Quaker Puff rice, the breakfast cereal shot from guns, present the challenge of the Yukon. It's Yukon King, swiftest and strongest lead dog of the Northwest, blazing the trail for Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police in his relentless pursuit of lawbreakers. On King, on you huskies! Gold, gold discovered in the Yukon. A stampede to the Klondike in the wild race for riches. Back to the days of the gold rush. With Quaker Puff wheat and Quaker Puff rice, bringing you the adventures of Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog, Yukon King, as they meet the challenge of the Yukon. Come and get it. Here's a bell ringer breakfast dish. A heaping bowlful of Quaker puffed wheat or Quaker puffed rice covered with milk or cream and topped with sliced bananas. Mmm, mmm. Just taste the tender crispness, the delicious nut like flavor of Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice. See how lusciously they blend with the bananas and milk or cream. For this bell ringer breakfast treat, Hurry and stock up on delicious Quaker puffed rice and Quaker puffed wheat. The Hobbs gang had been broken up by the police in Skagway. A few had been captured, but Slick Hobbs and two others had managed to escape just after a big bank robbery. Slick and one of the men, Joe Jessup, were hiding out in a cabin outside of Skagway. The other man who had escaped, Ed Collins, had disappeared. One day, more than a month after the robbery, Joe Jessup entered the cabin hurriedly with a Skagway newspaper in his hand. Hey, Slick, he's been caught. They got Ed Collins. Says so in the paper. What? Let me see that paper. Look, it's right there, see? Uh, Ed got picked up in Whitehorse in the Yukon Territory. Yeah. Instead of coming to this hideout as he was supposed to if anything went wrong, he hightailed it across the border and headed north. You seen as how he was carrying the wad of dough we took at the bank? It looks like Ed double-crossed us. That's easy to see. It says here the authorities of Skagway are going to send a United States Marshal up there to bring Ed back here. Yeah, that means they'll get back the dough. What's more, maybe Ed will squeal about this place. We'll have to move someplace else, Slick. Sure. Sure, we'll move someplace else, all right. You and me's gonna set out pronto for a white horse. What's the idea? Just this. We'll start right away and lay for that, Marshal, along the Yukon Trail. Don't be a sap. We'll never be able to get across the border. They'll be on the lookout for us. I know how to get across without passing the border patrol. And we can swing back to the trail through White Pass and wait for that United States Marshal, like I said. Well, then what? I'll take the Marshal's badge and papers, along with a warrant for Ed Collins. You can stay in hiding outside of White Horse while I go and get Collins. And we get that dough and get rid of him for pulling a double cross. But look, even if it did work, killing that United States Marshal's bad business. We won't kill him. We'll take his outfit and leave him. Without a traveling outfit, the snow and cold and time will do the rest. But he might get the drop. You on just it. leave it to me. Now let's get packed and ready to make the trip. That afternoon, the United States Marshal at Skagway, Alaska, was talking to one of his deputies. Well, Ralph, I'm about ready to set out for Whitehorse. The constable there will turn Collins over to me to bring back here. Better wash him clothes, Marshal, so we don't give you the slip on the way back. <laughs> don't worry, he won't get away from me. How come the Mounties was able to capture Collins? Well, the men we caught here in Skagway gave a good description of the two who got away with Slick Hobbs. One is named Joe Jessup, the other Ed Collins. The prisoners refused to describe Hobbs. He seems to have him buffaloed even though they're in jail. You reckon Jessup and Hobbs went across the border to the Yukon along with Collins, Marshal? Yeah, it could be, Ralph. We telegraphed the descriptions of Collins and Jessup to the Mounty headquarters in Dawson City. They issued a warning, and Collins was picked up in Whitehorse. He was alone, but the other two, Hobbs and Jessup, might be hiding out in that vicinity. Well, my job is to get Collins back here. Well, good luck, Marshal. Thanks, Ralph. 
I'll get started now. Be back as soon as I can. Three days later, Slick Hobbs and Joe Jessup, who were waiting in a temporary camp along the Yukon Trail, saw a lone traveler approaching. Here comes somebody, Slick. Do you think it's that marshal? I don't know. It won't take long for us to find out. Hi, mister. Going far? White horse. White horse, huh? Well, my partner and I will probably push on to Selkirk. I hear they've made a new strike there. I'm going up on business. Oh, you're not going to dig for gold, huh? That's right. Where are you men from? We come up to Skagway from Seattle. Oh, uh, I'm Frank Clark. This is my partner, Bill. Howdy, mister. I'm glad to know both of you. My name's Evans. Evans, huh? Well, come on into the lean-to. Join us in having some hot coffee and grub. It's just about ready. Ah, I'd be glad to. Yeah, here we are. Got a nice fire going, too. Have things fixed up right cozy here. Yeah, we spent the night here. Figured on moving along after we ate. Fire in front of the lean-to makes it warm in here. So make yourself comfortable. I might as well. Thanks. Here, I'll uh, pour the coffee. Say, uh... Isn't that a marshal's badge you have pinned in your jacket? Yes, it is. Now, what, what's a United States marshal doing going up into the Yukon? I'm going up to bring back a prisoner who's wanted in Skagway. You mean the uh, Mounties caught him up there, huh? Yes, we telegraphed a description to them several weeks ago. Oh. Well, uh, here's your coffee. Ah, oh, thanks. Ah, we telegraphed a description of another man, too. He's about your size, Bill. Huh? Well, but he wears a black beard inside your nose. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. You see, Bill? It's a good thing you're clean-shaven or the marshal might pick you up. <laughs> we figure the other man went up there with the one who was arrested. The Mounties will be on the lookout for him. Yeah. I hear those Mounties are mighty good at trailing a guy. That's right. They sure are. Well, sir, let's finish eating, and then maybe we can all travel together. That is, if it's all right with you, Marshal. Sure. Glad to have company. It's much safer than traveling alone. Fine. That's settled, then. We'll get our dog teams hitched and hit the trail together. The rest of that day, Slick and Joe traveled with Marshal Evans. Joe did his best not to show the nervousness he felt. And Slick went out of his way to act friendly. So that by the time they were ready to camp for the night, the Marshal had no reason for suspicion. Ho, 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 you! Ho, ho, you! Ho! We'll put up a canvas lean to under that ledge over there, Marshal. That'll keep us comfortable for the night. Fine, fine. While you and Bill fix the lean-to, I'll attend to the dogs and get a fire going. All right. The three men made things comfortable for the night, and after eating, they settled down to sleep. Later, Joe was awakened by Slick. Joe, you awake? Yeah. I got his gun, papers, and badge. Now we'll take his sled and supplies and leave him here. Let's get going. Suppose he wakes up. I got his gun. What if he does? Let's get the teams hitched. Come on. Quietly but hurriedly, Slick and Joe loaded the sleds and got the teams ready. Hey, we're all set, Joe. <laughs> he won't last 24 hours without food and on foot. Let's get away from here. Go ahead. Start his team. It's yours now. Marsh! Marsh, you husky! Leaving you, Marshal. So long. Oh, no, you're not. I'll you're show getting you. tough, huh? Take this. Oh. <laughs> so long, Marshal. Must. Must you have to? Sergeant Preston and Yukon King were in the constable's office at Whitehorse when they heard a dog team come to a stop outside. Dog team stopping out front, Frank. Yes, I heard them. Looking for me, mister? I reckon I am, Constable. I just came through from Skagway. Name's Marshal Evans. I understand you have a prisoner here for me. Oh, yes, Marshal. Got a telegram saying you'd be here after Collins. Oh, uh, meet Sergeant Preston. Glad to meet you, Marshal. Well, how are you, Sergeant? Oh, uh, here are the papers on Collins, along with my identification. Mm Mm-hmm. Hmm. Well, these all seem to be in order. I suppose you'll lay over until morning before starting back with the prisoner. No, Sergeant. I plan to leave right away. I spent last night just outside of Whitehorse, so I'm well rested. Oh, I see. Well, it is a good idea to start as soon as possible before the weather changes. Yeah, that's the way I figure. Oh, uh, Constable, I'd like to question the prisoner alone for a few minutes, if you have no objection. Mm, sure, Marshal. Come on, I'll take you to his cell. Yeah, he's right there. Collins? 
Marshal from Skagway's here. Wants to talk to you for a few minutes. Won't do him any good. I'll wait out in the office, Marshal. Call me when you're ready to take him from the cell. Sure thing. Come here, Collins. Hey, you sound like somebody. Slick. Holy smoke. In this dim light, because of your park, I didn't recognize you. You can't get away with this. I'll tell the constable Take that you helped me. Take it easy, Ed. I rigged up a scheme to get you free. They think I'm a marshal from Skagway. Yeah. Yeah, and once you get me out of here, I don't stand oh, a chance. Oh, no, no, forget that kind of talk, Ed. We know you had to make a getaway and that you would have come back when things got easy. Then, then you don't think I was trying to pull a double cross? What? Why, of course not. Listen, I brought Joe along. Left him in a deserted cabin outside of town. We'll head that way, pick up Joe. Then we'll head back and cross the border where they won't be watching. Eh? <laughs> Where'd you hide the money, Ed? I'll tell you after I know you mean to do what you say, Slick. <laughs> All right, have it your way. I'll get the constable to get you ready for the trip. You'll have to be handcuffed till we get out of town. Then it'll be clear sailing for the three of us. The constable gave Ed Collins his belongings and took him from the cell into the office where Sergeant Preston and King were waiting with Slick. Here he is, Marshal. Ready to go. Good. We'll get started right away. I'm heading south, Marshal. I'll go with you as far as the border. Oh, you're heading for the border? Yes. The border patrol's holding a man there. I have to bring him back. But uh, it'll take you a little while to get your supplies and sled ready. I I'd like to get going right away. So maybe you'll catch up to us then. Uh, I have my sled packed and my team's ready, Marshal, so there'll be no delay. I'll start out right now with you and your prisoner. Come along, King. <laughs> Sergeant Preston and King had been gone with Slick and Collins about an hour when a telegram was brought to the constable's office. <clears throat> telegram, constable? Oh, well, let me have it, Jake. <sighs> Marshal Evans robbed of all credentials and belongings and deserted on trail by two men thought to be other escape members of Hobbs' gang. Oh. Marshal picked up by a prospector. Gave following description of assailants. Both men were... Uh-oh. Bad news, Constable. Plenty bad, Jake. Sergeant Preston doesn't know it, but he's traveling south with a couple of ruthless and clever criminals. We'll continue our adventure in just a moment. They say that if March comes in like a lion... It goes out like a lamb. But spring weather is... <coughs> now, if you ask me... You? Hey, I didn't see you come in. Oh? Who are you? I, uh, I'm the weatherman. Weatherman? Boy, you're the fellow that can tell me. Me? Sure. What's the weather going to be like tomorrow morning? Oh, well, uh, it depends. Huh? Well, what's it going to be like? Sunshiny, rainy, warm, cold, or what? Uh, could be. Oh, well, look, can't you tell me for sure? Young man, uh, uh, speaking off the record, that is, you can be sure of only one thing tomorrow morning. Oh, what's that? Windy, rainy, or sunshiny day. I say nothing makes a day like a breakfast of Quaker puffed wheat or Quaker puffed rice with milk or cream and fruit. Oh, you go for the breakfast cereals of wheat or rice shot from guns. Do I? I eat a big bowlful every morning, spring, summer, fall, or winter. Regardless of the weather, huh? You bet. They help supply food energy the year around. Right. Quaker popped wheat and Quaker popped rice furnish extra food values of restored natural grain amounts of vitamin B1, niacin, and iron. Yep. They're good for you. They're G-O-O-D good, period. Remember, Quaker popped wheat and Quaker popped rice are shot from guns to make them crisp and tender. Yes, these king-size kernels are actually exploded up to eight times normal size to make them bigger and better tasting. They're shot through and through with bang-up nut-like flavor, too. Ask Mom to get both kinds. Eat the wheat one time, rice the next. Quaker popped wheat and Quaker popped rice. Shot from gun. Now to continue. 
After leaving the constable's office with Ed Collins riding his sled and accompanied by Preston and King, Slick Hobbs tried to figure out how to get rid of the Mountie before stopping to pick up Joe Jessup at the deserted cabin. Finally, he decided to go right by the cabin without stopping, knowing that if Joe saw the Mountie approaching the cabin with him, the waiting man would understand and keep undercover. Slick urged the team to a faster pace as they came in sight of the cabin. But as they came closer, the marshal's dog team, which Joe had kept at the cabin, started to bark when they heard the others approaching. Marshal Evans, wait a minute. Stop your team in front of that cabin. Slick looked back and for a moment was tempted to keep going. And then as they came abreast of the cabin, he stopped the team. Oh, 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 oh. We'll only stop for a minute, Marshal. Why do you want to stop, Sergeant? Someone's using that old cabin. His dogs are around at the side and there's smoke coming from the chimney. Oh, whatever. Probably some sourdough who decided it was a good place to hold up for a while. I make a point of checking on people who are in the vicinity. Won't hurt to look in on him. I'll be back in a minute. Oh, uh, Sergeant, wait. Uh, I'll bring the prisoner and come along with you. Huh? Give us a chance to warm up a bit. Come on, Collins. You left town only about an hour ago, but if you want to come along, it's all right with me. Come on, Gary. Uh, Maybe you'd better leave your dog out here to sort of watch the teams. You know, I notice what a smart dog he is, and my team is kind of jumpy at times. Oh, well, all right. Guard the sleds, King. Watch him, boy. You walk ahead of us, Collins, to the door. Stranger doesn't open the door. Maybe he's sick. Uh, you might as well open it and go in, Sergeant. Might as well. Oh, one room cabin. No one here. I'm here, Monty. I got behind the door when it opened. I'll reach you. You'll get a bullet. Didn't know Slick would bring a Monty with him, but... Don't act Shut like up, it. Joe. Raising his hand, Sergeant Preston slowly turned and looked searchingly at Joe and Slick. Then he spoke. Joe? Slick. Now it's beginning to sink in. <laughs> bright boy. But not bright enough to know that he's Slick Hobbs instead of being a marshal. Slick Hobbs, eh? Somehow you pulled a fast one to get your man Collins out of jail. I should have suspected something. You didn't seem like the type to be a United States marshal. And I didn't think you'd risk your knack, Hobbs, to get one of your men free. <laughs> I wasn't going to let you know so soon, Sergeant. But since Joe let the cat out of the bag, this is as good a time to settle things as any. That's right, Slick. Now, Joe, watch him while I take his gun. Go ahead. One move and I'll plug him. I got it. Can you let me carry his gun, Slick? I don't have one. You don't need a gun yet, Ed. I'll let you have it after you tell us where the money is hid. But not in front of this Mountie. So that's the reason you went to all this trouble, eh? Yeah, that's it. I suppose the real Marshal Evans is dead. Well, by now he ought to be, being alone without a sled or supplies. But you can't say we killed him. It's the same as murder. What's more, I wouldn't give two cents for Collins' chances after he tells you what you want to know. Now, wait a minute. Ah, don't me... listen to him, Ed. He's just trying to scare you. Get some rawhide to tie him up. All right. Now, turn your back to Joe and me, Mountie. Go on, do as I say. With two of you holding guns, I guess I have to. Sergeant Preston turned his back to Joe and Slick. The next moment, Slick moved forward close behind this him. will fix you. As Slick landed a blow with the gun butt on the back of his head, Preston fell unconscious. Outside, the great dog, Yukon King, heard the commotion and sensed that his master was in peril. He rushed to the cabin, barking furiously, and began scratching at the outside of the door. Here's the rawhide cords. Hey, listen to the dog. Yeah, bolt the door quick, Joe. That dog might manage to get it open. He knows something's wrong in here. Yeah, yeah, I guess I'd better. Now, Ed, tie the mounty hand and foot, and we'll toss him on the bunk over there. He'll be past help by the time he's found here. Let's get busy, huh? A short time later, Slick, Joe, and Collins were ready to leave the cabin. King was still barking and whining outside the door. We're going to have trouble getting to the sleds with that dog out there, Slick. I'm afraid of him. Don't worry, we'll get to the sleds. Yeah, how about the mounty sled and team, Slick? I got the team we took from the marshal. You drive that, Ed can drive mine. I'll take the Mounties. Now, we better get going. Come on. Wait, Slick. We'll open that door. While I was in the White Horse Jail, I heard stories about that dog. The sergeant has him well trained. Look, you can't jump me if you two just open the door wide enough for me to put the gun barrel. I'll let that mutt have it. Now, go ahead. All right. Get set, Ed, and keep your weight against the door. All right, I'm ready. Now, ease the door open about an inch. And be careful. Here, here goes. Hurry up, Slick. He's sleeping against the door. He won't be able to hold it. Well, I'll get him right now. That did it. 
Yeah, he's lying still. Come on, let's go out. Gee, you got him all right. Look at the size of him. Will. Never mind that. Let's get to the sleds and be on our way. Come on. For a short time, King lay motionless in the snow. A crimson mark just over his ear showed where the bullet from Slick's gun had creased King's head, causing him to fall stunned to the ground. Finally, the great dog struggled to his feet, whining. For a moment, he stood still as the haze slowly cleared from his eyes. And then, shaking his massive head, he sniffed at the cabin door and whimpered. King tried to shake away the sharp pain that resulted from the burning bullet crease. And then suddenly he forgot his pain as he heard Sergeant Preston's voice calling from inside the cabin. Instinctively, the big dog at first pawed senselessly at the closed door. And then gradually he remembered how he'd been taught to stand on his hind feet and paw at the latch of a door. King immediately went to work pawing at the latch. Finally, his heavy paw came down solidly on the extended latch, and the door swung open. King, good boy. I knew you could do it, fella. I can't get up. The cords, King. Chew the cords. The Mountie lay on his side, so that his bound hands faced King at the edge of the bunk. The intelligent dog sniffed at the rawhide, then began chewing at the knot. Within a short time, the cord parted, and Preston's hands were free. Good boy, King. I'll sit up and untie my feet. Oh, oh, my head... Oh, got a wallop on the back of the head, fella. Felt dizzy for a second. Now oh, I can work on that knot. That's got it. I'll see if I can stand up. Well, I guess I'll live, fella. What happened to you, King? Oh, creased by a bullet, eh? One more score to settle with Hobbs and the others. As Preston approached the open door, he could see that his dog team and sled were gone. So they took my sled... Not so good, eh, King? No sled and no gun. Well, boy, we'll have to try to make it to town on foot. Let's get going. After walking toward Whitehorse for almost half an hour, Sergeant Preston finally saw a dog team coming toward him. Someone coming, fella. It's a constable. Hello, Frank! Sergeant, I sure am glad to see you. Feelings mutual, Frank. I ran into trouble. I knew you would. A telegram came after you left. Real Marshal Adams... I found that out, Frank, and the knowledge cost me my sled, my dog team, and my gun. That Hobbs is clever, Sergeant. Not quite clever enough, Frank. His hurry to get to Skagway made me suspicious. Oh, I'll admit I didn't guess the truth soon enough. How are you fixed for guns? I have my revolver and a rifle. Take your choice. I'll carry the revolver if you don't mind. Here it is. Good, thanks. Now we'll trail those three men and bring them back. Three? Yes, I'll tell you what happened as we go along. Oh, you ride the sled, Sergeant. You must be tired. All right, Frank. Come on, King. When we reach the deserted cabin back down the trail, King can pick up their scent and lead us to them. Let's go. March your The short winter day was drawing to a close when Slick and the other two crooks put up for the night in a cabin along the trail. As soon as they were settled, Slick turned his attention to Ed Collins. Well, Ed? Now we have a chance to talk things over with you. What do you want to talk about, Slick? The dough? Where'd you hide it? I told you I'll tell you that when we get back, Slick. No. You're going to tell us right now. Why, you... Hold it, Ed. I got this gun on you. And you'll use it, too, if you don't give out with that information. But if I tell you now, how do I know you won't... Oh, look, Ed. Why should we hurt you? Aren't we all in this together, the three of us? Well, I... Sure, Ed. We just want to know the money's safe, that's all. Well... Well, all right, I'll tell you. I stopped at the hideout cabin near Skagway before either of you got there. You mean it's hit at the cabin? Yeah. I moved the cot and pulled up a floorboard. I put the money in the opening and put the board and the cot back in place. Holy smoke, it was right there all the time we were there, Joe. And we come all the way up here to find out. Yeah, Ed was going to go back there and get it when we weren't around. You're a double-crosser, Ed. No, 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 wait, Slick, honest, I was going to... Let him have it, Slick. No need to share that dough with him. Slick, Slick, I swear I wasn't going to double-cross. You just heard this bullet, Collins. No, you don't, Hobbs. No! I'll get that, Marty. No, you don't. Ed Collins grabbed Joe and struggled with him. The two men turned and twisted, and as Sergeant Preston started forward, Joe managed to press the gun into Collins' side. 
But before he could pull the trigger, the great dog king streaked past Preston and grabbed Joe's gun arm, pulling it away just as it went off. Oh, take him away! Get that dog don't away! Don't boy, don't boy. You hurt Collins? No. No, the bullet went wild. The dog got there just in time. Oh. Things happened so fast I didn't have a chance to help, Sergeant. Collins and King were all the help I needed, Frank. You, you saved my life, Sergeant. Then so did the dog. Listen, Mountie. Shut up, Hobbs. Get on your feet. Let go. You hurt my arm. If it wasn't for that wounded oh. arm, I'd beat you to a pulp for trying to kill King. Not to mention what you did to me and the others. Well, get them back to Whitehorse, Frank, and then telegraph the news to Skagway. You can't prove nothing against me. Yes, they can. I'll talk plenty, Sergeant. Good for you, Collins. We'll take these two in for attempted murder. You'll go to jail, too, Collins. But your testimony against these two might lighten your sentence. And I'd say with a list of charges against them here in the Yukon added to those in the States, I'd be lucky if they ever get out of jail. That's right, Frank. All we have to do now is get them back to Whitehorse, and we can say the case is closed. In just a moment, Sergeant Preston will give you a preview of Friday's adventure. Picture yourself trailing outlaws across the windswept, snow-covered Great Northwest. Yes, just like Sergeant Preston. Well, sir, you'd appreciate that real stamina calls for a nourishing breakfast. So fortify yourself every morning with a breakfast that includes a heaping bowlful of Quaker puffed wheat or Quaker puffed rice with milk or cream and fruit. Remember, wheat or rice shot from guns gives you added food values of restored natural grain amounts of vitamin B1, niacin, and iron. And delicious, taste them. You just can't beat Quaker puffed rice and Quaker puffed wheat. So tomorrow at your store, look for the big red and blue packages with the smiling Quaker man on the front. Remember, delicious, crisp, nourishing Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice are never sold in bags or bulk. Listen Friday when Sergeant Preston and Yukon King meet the challenge of the Yukon in the case of the innocent criminal. When the Aurora Mine Office was held up by a lone bandit, King soon picked up the criminal's trail and led me straight to the cabin where he was hiding. But it turned out that the man we found was the victim of a clever frame-up. In order to obtain the evidence needed to convict the real criminals, I resorted to a plan which didn't work out the way I expected. It brought both me and the man I was trying to clear face to face with death. Be sure to hear this exciting adventure Friday. These radio dramas, a feature of the challenge of the Yukon Incorporated, are created by George W. Trendle, produced by Trendle Campbell Enterprises, directed by Fred Flowerday, and supervised by Charles D. Livingston. The part of Sergeant Preston is played by Paul Sutton. They are brought to you every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at this same time by Quaker Puffed Wheat and Quaker Puffed Rice. The breakfast cereals shot from guns. Remember, for delicious hot breakfast, enjoy Quaker Oats. The giant of the cereals is Quaker Oats. Delicious, nutritious, makes you feel ambitious. The giant of the cereals is Quaker Oats. And here's why Quaker Oats is called the giant of the cereals. There's more growth, more endurance in oatmeal than any other whole grain cereal. So make your hot breakfast nourishing Quaker oats. Quaker and mother's oats are the same. This is J. Michael wishing you goodbye, good luck, and good health from Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice. So long.